Most Christians today don't know how to get close to God because they don't practice the love of God any longer. We live in a day and age where people have burned bridges behind them. We live in a day and age where there's more divorce than ever before. We live in a day and age where uh, people are being told to do things that go against all their training since they were a child. They weren't trained to love other people. They weren't trained to love anyone else but themselves. And even then, in many cases, they don't love themselves. And so we need to get closer to God through this time and this season in the season of his appearing. Now let's go over to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians 3. Ephesians chapter 3. And we're going to see here in Ephesians chapter 3 some interesting information. Starting in verse 9. Starting in verse 8. To me, the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ, things that you can't fathom, in other words. Verse 9, and to bring to light what is the administration of the mystery. So he's bringing to light the administration of the mystery of God, which for ages has been hidden in God who created all things. If I was just to kind of give you a little uh, introduction here to what we're reading, uh, you could preach on this chapter probably for a year and not have to leave it because he just has one doctrine after another doctrine after another doctrine. In verse 8, we see that he was given uh, the gospel for the Gentiles. That's a doctrine. Another doctrine in verse 8 was the infallible riches of Christ, another doctrine. In verse 9, we see the administration of the mystery. First of all, the administration is a, is a doctrine. The mystery is a doctrine of Christ, uh, which for ages has been hidden in God. There is another there's an, uh, an, another doctrine right there. Who created all things? Another doctrine. Uh, the earth didn't evolve, it was made, praise God. Uh, verse 10. So that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the rulers and the authorities in heavenly places. It says in the Amplified to the angelic rulers, or in other words, that the wisdom of God will be made known to angels through the, through the ministry of the saints here in this earth. Put a better way even, that you have revelation knowledge that angels cannot look into until you first look into it because your relationship with God is far closer and far greater than that that what the angels have currently. Angels right now are listening to me preach. They're listening to this message. They watch the programs because that is exactly what's being said here. We have revelation angels have not looked into because God hasn't revealed it to them. And God has said he's one of the mysteries that was hidden in God is if you as an angel want to know what's going on and how prophecy is being fulfilled and all the other scriptures are being fulfilled, watch humans. I'll, I'll, I'll show you. I'll give you an answer. But I'm not going to have a little class for angels up in heaven. We're just going to sit you down in a classroom of 30 and, you know, you'll get your wings at the end of the class or something like that. No, you've got to listen to what preachers are saying in the earth about revelation. Because the revelation by the Holy Spirit is coming to man, not coming to angels. Amen. Not even angels know of Jesus returning. Amen. No one knows the return of Jesus Christ except God the Father himself. There are many things that are hidden from angels today, yet they're hidden until someone preaches on them, someone talks about them. Now let's keep going. Verse 19, so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church, through the church, to the rulers and the authorities in heavenly places, or angelic rulers and authorities in heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose which God carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord. In other words, for there to be an eternal purpose for mankind, man had to seek it out. God made it evident. And for the angels to find out about it, they had to watch what man was doing with the revelation of the prophetic nature of Scripture. Let's keep reading. Uh, jump down to verse 16. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, another doctrine there, 
uh, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man. Several other doctrines right there. All right, we have power through Christ. We have power through the Holy Spirit. You're strengthened in your inner man. Verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And that you being rooted and grounded in love or agape or the contract of love. So said another way, and you being rooted and grounded in the framework of love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth and to know the contract and the framework of the love of Christ which surpasses this knowledge that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly, beyond all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church, and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. That one chapter could have been stuck at the end of the Bible. That's almost like a closing summation of so many different doctrines in the Bible. And we see right here, in verse 17, that, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, not by force, but by faith receiving him, and that you being rooted and grounded in love. Rooted, you got your roots in love, and then you grow your roots in love. You get a deeper root system in love. You don't let anything come against that root system. You always work at that love. Now, we found out a little while ago that God is love. And if we say that we love God, then we ought to love our brother also. If we read on there in 1 John chapter 4, for those who do not love their brother cannot say that they love God. For those who they do not love and can see cannot love someone that they cannot see. Amen. So in order for us to practice agape love, we first have to get saved. The second thing we need to do is we need to know that Jesus Christ is in our hearts by faith. The third thing that we need to do is know that God loves you with an everlasting love. The fourth thing that we need to do is once we begin to receive his love, we begin to put his love into practice in society. Is that a church mouse I just heard run by over here? Just got really... Was that? that Come on. I've been meaning to catch him, but... Uh, Huh? Getting kind of quiet in here. We need to walk in love. Amen. We need, we need to do things in love. We need to treat other people with love. And that love we need to take from God. We can't make up our own love. Like we can't make up our own dirt. We cannot make up our own love. We need to get that love from God. You cannot separate yourself from God's love and think that your love is going to just work all okay. Let's go over to Mark chapter 12 and begin to take a look at this. Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12, starting in verse 29. Jesus answered and said, The foremost is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Now what happened here is in the previous verse, in verse 28, Jesus is debating and one, a scribe came in here, kind of catching the debate at the end of it. And it says, One of the scribes came and heard them arguing and recognizing that he had answered them well, asked him, What commandment is the foremost of all? In other words, we know what the Ten Commandments are. We know that you know, we're not supposed to murder and all that. But what commandment is really the foremost of all? And he said, the foremost is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And you shall love, and that word love there is agapeo, or the public demonstration of love. You shall love or have a public demonstration of love for the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. Amen. So how do you have a public demonstration of love for God? Wow. Well, one of the first things I can see is just if you do come to church and you're here during the praise time to praise them. Yes. Not to go, and eh, they're playing this song again. I heard this three weeks ago. Huh? To praise them. This is your opportunity. 
So I see people praising with their hands. That's how they show in the old days how they love God. That's how they show them today. The Bible says to raising holy hands high.